Hey guys, welcome to Sew Bliss. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make this Darling Sleep Sack. And the pattern I'm going to be using has the option to have a tie at the bottom or no tie at the bottom. And this is a free pattern from C. Kate Sew. She's a blogger, I'll put all the links down below to her stuff. If you haven't checked her out, you really should because she posts some really awesome stuff and she will do free patterns every once in a while and then she also has some patterns that you can buy. So make sure you go and check out her website. I'll put the link down below for the pattern. So you're gonna need a pattern, obviously, and then you're gonna need your fabric. For mine, I'm using two different fabrics. Um, they're both knits. You could get a little thicker of a knit if it's for the winter time or a little thinner if it's for the summertime. So whatever works for you, just make sure that it stretches. For this first one I did, I obviously did the light blue sleeves and then this is like a little whale pattern for the main part and then even on the ends, the lining, I did the light blue as well. So for this one that I'm gonna be showing you today, my main fabric is gonna be these little bikes. Super excited about this, love it. I'll put links down below where you can get this fabric. And then I'm gonna do an accent of red for the sleeves and the binding. Now, other than that, you're just going to need all of your basic sewing supplies. So let's get started. First, you're going to have to print your pattern out. So go to that website that I linked down below, CK Sew, and get the pattern. And you're gonna have um, to tape pieces together. So here's one long piece, that's the body of the sleep sack and then you'll have like a couple binding pieces and a sleeve piece and then the tail lining now if you don't want to do the tail you don't have to um, she does have an option on her website but I am going to show you how to do the tail so once you have your pattern pieces already then we're going to cut out your fabric this is where if you're using two different fabrics you're going to make sure that you're cutting out the right pieces so I'm going to be making sure that the body is going to be this bicycle fabric that I'm using and the lining and the binding and the sleeves is all going to be this red fabric that I'm using. So make sure you know what fabric goes with which pieces when you are cutting yours out. When I'm cutting out knits, I like to use my rotary cutter because it just is a smoother, cleaner, faster cut. So I'm gonna be using that and this again is my main front and back piece, the very biggest piece you have. And I'm going to be cutting two of those on the fold. You wanna make sure you're cutting along the fold right here and that's what she has on the pattern right here. That's what that means is on the fold line. So I'm gonna start cutting one out and then I'll line it up and cut out another one. Now, when I got to right here, I forgot about this little notch and I cut it right off. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just going to cut in. Because we have a 3 8 inch seam allowance, I can cut in about a 3 8 inch and that will leave a mark for me just like that so that I know where to match that up later on. And also when you are cutting out the front and the back, make sure that you have a back neckline and a front neckline and to keep those two separate. Now, once all your pieces are cut out, we're first gonna start with the front binding piece. There should be one of them. So I'm gonna take that piece and with the wrong sides together, I'm going to fold it like a hot dog, matching up those raw edges. And you can pin this if you want. I'm just gonna lay it like this and kind of mush it with my hands. And then I'm gonna take that over to my iron and iron it down so that it creates a nice crease right here. And I will do this with my back binding piece, but I don't wanna get those two confused. So if you have a hard time with getting the pieces confused, just do them one at a time. But just make sure you're doing wrong sides together so your right sides will be facing out. You can't really tell what my right or wrong sides are with the red but if you have fabric that you can, make sure right sides out. So I'm gonna go over and iron those down. Once I have those two pieces ironed, I'm then going to take my body pieces, and this is my front body piece. I'm gonna work with the front binding piece. So not to get you guys confused, but um, this is my front piece that I cut out, and I haven't even opened up yet. 
because first what I'm going to do is in the neckline, so this top part right here, where it's folded, that means that's the center of the fabric. It's perfectly folded there, so I'm gonna put a pin there to mark it. And then on my front binding piece, I'm gonna fold it in half and try not to stretch it too much. And I'm gonna put a pin here to mark the center of that as well. Now I am going to be doing the same thing on the back. So once you get the front one pinned on, you can then do the same thing to the back pieces. So now I can open those up. And with my raw edges matching, can line those pins up so that I'll line my middle up. And like I said, my raw edges right here are matching up with the raw edges of the neckline. So now I'm gonna go along and pin this around till it just reaches the top of the neckline and pin those together. Now that I've finished pinning the front pieces together, I'm going to be doing the back pieces. So I'll have my back binding piece and my back body piece. After you have your front and your back pieces pinned, you can take it over to your sewing machine or your serger and sew right along here, just sewing those two pieces down together. Now, I recommend you use a serger for knits. It just creates that nice clean edge, but if you don't have a serger, you can still use your sewing machine and just do either a stretch stitch, which it depends on your machine if it has it, or a zigzag stitch right along the edge. And again, we're using 3 8 seam allowance, so don't forget that. After you've sewn that binding piece on, you're then going to iron the binding and the front or the back piece, whatever one you're working with, just so that the seam allowance right here lays down and the binding lays up. Because we want that neckline to just lay really nice for the baby and not to curl up. So we're gonna iron it down first and then we'll come right along here just right along the edge where those two meet up and you're gonna stitch that seam allowance down and that'll help prevent this from curling anymore. So it'll look really nice and look pretty professional. Let me show you on the one I've already done. Here I have my front and here I have my binding and then I stitched right along this edge. And I could have stitched even closer. Um, so it just holds that seam allowance down right there. So first I'm gonna iron, and then I'll just go sew a straight stitch along the front and the back. After those bindings are sewn down, now we're gonna sew the two pieces together. So we're gonna find those notches that we made. I clipped in a little bit, like I said. Um, if you clipped out, they'll probably be easier to find. And also make sure you know which piece is your back piece and which is your front piece. I just put a clip on my back piece so that way I'm not getting them confused. For this, we want our fabric right sides up like I have it. Then I'm gonna take my back piece and it's gonna go on top. So remember that. And I'm gonna take those notches. So here I have a little clip right there and I'm gonna match it up with the little clip right here at the bottom. And I'm just gonna match those up. And I think I'm actually gonna use my clips for this. And I'm gonna clip one right there for now and just kind of see how that lays. It's not gonna line up right here, but I'm going to want to make it look and feel like an armhole. So then I can come over here and I'll match those notches up as well. And at this point, yeah, nothing else is matching up. 
or specifically matching up. So don't be worried about that. Like I said, this one is gonna stick out a little bit and that one does too. Now I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna be using a basting stitch and a basting stitch is really just a long stitch that you can take out in the end. So I'm just gonna base these two together right along here and you'll see the armhole will eventually meet up and create this nice smooth piece. So we'll be cutting these pieces off in the end. So don't worry too much about that. Just make sure when you go over to base, you're gonna be on the inside. Don't go past the 3 8 inch mark of where your seam line is going to be and just stitch right in here a basting stitch. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. Just make sure those pieces lay nicely and flat. And we're just creating this little neck piece right here. So it can be a little confusing, but also remember it doesn't have to be perfect. It will work and match up if you have those notches matched up. Now that I have these edges basted, I'm just going to cut and make that seam exactly how it, I need it to be. So like I said, it'll be that round spot where we will put your sleeve in in a minute. So you just wanna make sure it lines up just like that. Mine's a little jagged right here. That's okay, cause we're gonna sew it. So I'll do the same thing on this side. Cutting it off and just trimming this up. And there we go. Now it looks like they were meant to be like that all along. So now I'm going to take my sleeve pieces and this is the part we're going to insert right here. If you can tell, it'll kind of fit right there. So the straight piece down here at the bottom, we need to hem it first. So I'm gonna take mine over to my serger and just serge the edge so it's nice and clean. You could do a zigzag stitch if you would like and then fold it over half of an inch. And on the right side, I'll do a top stitch right along the edge. And a top stitch is just the stitching that will be seen on the right side. So I'll just do that on both my sleeves so that I have a nice hem ready to go. Once the sleeves are all hemmed, now we're going to put them onto our body pieces. So I'm gonna do this with right sides together. So make sure your hem that you just finished is now facing wrong side up. And for mine, I'm gonna find the center of the sleeve, just so I know I'm kind of somewhat equally distributing it. So there's my center. And then I don't really know the center of my, the body piece, but I'm gonna estimate, based on this neckline right here, I'm just gonna estimate that and pin that right there. And now I can pin this. And you just kind of have to maneuver it as you go. Pin this along until it meets up Oops. right here. And do the same thing on the other side. So pretty much what we did with the binding is what I'm gonna be doing. Now that I have both sides pinned, I'm just gonna go sew those down. And again, I'll be using my serger on these, but if you don't have a serger, you can use the stretch stitch or zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. Now with your sleeves sewn in, we're then ready to sew the side seams. So I'm gonna take my front piece, which is this bottom piece. Remember we had the back piece on top and I'm gonna put right sides together on top of my back piece. And I'm just going to be matching up the sleeves right along this edge, the bottom edge and then the side seam as well. I'm gonna match those up all the way down. So I'm just gonna stop at this point. I'm not gonna sew in here because we still have to attach our lining. So once I have my side seams all matched up, I'm gonna take this over and sew this down. Now that I have the edges of the sleep sack sewn together, I'm going to finish the bottom part. So I'm gonna take my lining pieces and with right sides together, I'm just gonna match them up like I have here. And I'm going to be sewing these short ends on both sides together. And then while I'm over there, I'm gonna open it up and just finish off these edges if you would like. 
I'm going to be finishing mine off with my serger. You could do a zigzag stitch or you could just leave it as it is. So just so this edge right here and this edge right here. Here I have my tail lining after I've sewn it. It was laying like this and then I opened it up with the seams together that I just sewed. So those together and then I just finished off my edge right there with my serger. So now with right sides together, so let me flip it actually with the seams out. So like that, here I have my seam right here out. I'm going to slide the lining up onto the sack and it looks a little funky, but I'm going to match those ends up. So it kind of takes a second, but just match those ends, right sides together again. It kind of looks funky, but it'll all work out in the end. And I'm gonna pin that together. Here's that tail lining pinned on, so it looks not as messy now. And I'm gonna go over to my serger and I'm just gonna serge all the way around it. I'm not serging up here where I finished the edge off. And for this, we're gonna be using a quarter inch seam. Once you have that lining sewn in, then you're gonna flip it to right sides out. And right now it's a little lumpy, it's a little bumpy, so I'm gonna take mine over to my iron and iron it so it looks really nice and just press it really well along these seams and I'm gonna make sure they come out and lay really nice. Now here I have mine pressed and ready to go and the last step is going to be stitching right along the edge of where that lining is. So you can stitch on the inside um, so that you can catch all that lining just all the way around it so that it will stay nicely. And one thing that I did do on my whale one is I stitched all the way around the lining so that it would stay in place. Now I'm not sure if I like that more or less, so on this one I'm not gonna do it, but if you want to, you could do a top stitch all the way around and that would hold it in place as well. So now I'll just do my stitching all around this right here. Once you have that sewed, you are all done with your sleep sack. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm super excited with how these turned out. I can't wait for my little one to get here so that I can put him in them. I know this will make a great baby shower gift, a friend gift, anything. If you're having a baby or if you just know someone that's having a baby and want to give them something special. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more sewing tutorials. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.